If you watched my previous video and were interested in how I managed to get two devices to communicate without the internet, you'll find the answer in the following minutes. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a Wi-Fi multiplayer framework using the simplest approach possible. At the end of this video, you'll have the following result. An all-in-one multiplayer manager that can work both as a client and as a server. As the server, it will be able to listen for incoming connections, it will listen and broadcast messages, and will be able to send messages of its own. The clients will also be able to send and receive messages and will notify the server and other clients when they disconnect, as you can see from the example on screen. We'll begin by creating our server class, Heart and Center of Operations. The server will make use of a simple message class within it to handle the transmission of packets. This class will enable us to transmit operation codes and the actual payload message over the network. In the server, we'll define the following variables. These can be separated into three major groups. At the top, we find the network and fundamentals, like the buffer size for messages, the communication listening port, and the socket used to transmit data. Of note here is that we are using a TCP socket used to reliably transfer packets. It is considered to be slower than its UDP counterpart, but since our ping is essentially zero, as we are working on a local Wi-Fi, speed is not really a concern, and I'd rather have the reliable communications in the games I make. In the middle, we find the events that will trigger at various stages of the networking process. And finally, at the bottom, we're handling more networking essentials in the form of the networking thread, list of connected clients, and the actual communications buffer. First of our methods is the host method. It basically just sets up the socket for listening to incoming connections. If a connection appears, this method will trigger. Its job is to add the new socket connection to our list of clients, handle all the received data in the creatively named receive data method, and restart the listening process by calling the begin accept method again on the server socket. Before we tackle what happens on the receive data method, let's tie a couple of loose ends. Up next is the join method. After setting up the flag that we are not the host, it attempts to connect to any socket listening on the local network. If a connection is successful, a new thread is started to listen for any incoming data in the background. Let's have a look at what this thread is doing. In an endless loop, it stores any incoming packets as an array of bytes. It then copies the non-empty portion of the array and decodes it into ASCII. Finally, it uses our unpackJSON utility method to deserialize the message and call the onDataCo coroutine on the main thread. To do so, we're using a utility class called Unity Main Thread Dispatcher that you can find linked below in the video description alongside the code. The utility methods we will be using are the following. There's not much to say on them as they are very small and self-explanatory. Before we move into the meat of the server class, let's have a look at how we're actually sending our packets. The send method creates a new message object and serializes it into bytes. It either then broadcasts it to all the connected clients or just sends it to the server, depending on whether we are the host. It's now time to face our longest method, the receive data method, called whenever data is received both in the client and the server. Firstly, it gets the current connection and tries to collect all the sent bytes. If it fails, the socket connection is closed and the client is removed. If it succeeds, a message is deserialized and built. The same message is then fed onto the onData event and followed into a switch that will determine a series of basic responses. In the switch, we check and react to specific operation codes, such as a client disconnecting or the server shutting down. Finally, if we are the host, the message is broadcasted to all the connected clients, and the cycle repeats by calling the same method recursively. Note that this is the same behavior we use for listening to new connections on the host. To conclude the server class, we quickly go over the cleanup methods. 
close client connection and close all sockets. The first sends a client exit operation code to the server. The second one sends a server shutdown message to all the connected clients. Both close the socket at the end. Finally, on disable, we call either method based on whether we are the host. It's now time to talk about the base network manager class. As variables, we have just a reference to the server and a flag to check if the networking has already started. We then have an initialization and a shutdown method. On the former, we set up the event listeners and on the latter, we release the listeners we previously set up. After those methods are defined, we move on to the host and join helpers. Alongside the declaration of all the virtual methods needed to make your own network manager class, as we will see later. Finally, we call init on awake and shutdown on destroy. And that is all you need to set up your own Wi Fi networking project. Let's see an example of how to implement a custom network manager using what we just built. To do so, we just need to override four methods. On connect, on data, on client disconnect, and on server shutdown. It is up to you what to do when these events are triggered. I chose to write a debug log error for the connection and disconnection of the sockets, and to write down the contents of a message if the MSG operation code was received. All that is left to do now is to send such message. We can do so by using the send method on the server whenever we press the space bar. And that concludes the implementation of our own network manager. This last section is dedicated to a small utility class that we can use to either host or join using Unity's on GUI hook. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you find this video useful to make your own Wi-Fi games in Unity. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please leave a like or a comment and consider subscribing for more content like this.